welcome to Crafting Kitty. My name is Erin and it's Saturday. So it's time for my weekly roundup. What is this weekly roundup you might be asking? Well, on Saturdays I like to just go through my week and especially my week in crafting. Um, show you any finished objects I have, FOs, any works in progress, whips, and I have an explosion of stuff all around me in the craft room right now. So let's just dive in. I don't want this to take forever. I completed five things. Um, I've kind of talked about it before. I've gone through my stash and found oddball bits of yarn that I don't know where they came from. And for like the fancy novelty ones, I am just trying to make scrunchies with them. So I found this very strange um it's, it was like a chain construction kind of purple blue pink yarn I don't know what it is I have no idea it had no label I have no idea how much I had but I wanted to just try to use it so I made this scrunchie and then I didn't like how stiff this middle was so I just did kind of some loops around the outside to kind of give it a flower effect and then I thought well what happens if I just kind of do only chains I made this kind of flowery one so it's all just chains of five interlocked together and then I wanted to try to do a granny technique and I just started doing it. I didn't really count very well because I didn't end up with a four. I ended up with 27 stitches, which is divisible by three. <laughs> so I have a granny triangle. And this I kind of just went until I ran out of yarn. And there we have, but I actually think for a scrunchie, the granny triangle isn't a bad idea. So yeah, I made these three scrunchies and then I had this other kind of hot magenta yarn again don't know what it was it's kind of a ribbon yarn and the little ball I had made two scrunchies so this one I got two rounds and then I did a shell around the border to kind of make it a little flowery and this one I ran out after two yard two rounds so it got two rounds and there we go this one I think is a, a better scrunchie it's a floppier um I think these will still work but they're not quite as floppy I think they'll still be pretty though so five scrunchies completed yes and that's two balls of strange I don't even know if I can call it scrap I think it was part of a mystery bag I got more along the lines in um from Hirschner's bargain corner um oh dear okay where do we start let's just start at the right and move to the left I have in this bag for the February crafting kitty creator spotlight we're doing Marley bird and I have been making an item to be one of the giveaway items at the end of the month. So I went through um, Marley Bird's channel and found a tutorial for this shawl. It's called Crochet It Shawl For You. And she had a free pattern available through Yarn Inspirations. So I went ahead and printed up the free pattern. So this is both a tutorial on her YouTube channel and a free pattern so you can have both like if you're trying to learn to read patterns if you watch the video in conjunction with the pattern it it might make sense and it might help you learn how to read patterns um so i am through row uh row 12 with this i was gonna correct myself and say rounds but no it's rows and here we go. I think this is very pretty. I was a little worried that the variegated yarn was too busy, but it looks busy in in the camera, but I think in person it's not as bad. Um, I do think this one might need a little blocking. It's bulging a bit in the middle there, 
but we'll see how it works up through the end. So basically the written pattern goes through round 12 and then you just complete it to, it says 58 inches. I think it says 58 inches. Yeah. So it's about 58 inches across the top, but you can really go to whatever your preference is. Um, and this one, she has you use two colors. So like you can see it best in this one, a m main color for the body and then contrast color for the trim. I'm just going to keep going with this yarn and do the whole thing in one color. I am using some Lion Brand Basic Stitch I got in a mystery box. It's 100% acrylic, four weight, and this color is two pines. So it's a couple shades of green and then a nice, I'm going to call it a winter white. It's not quite bright white. But yeah, I have a bunch of those and that's what I'm making with it. So look for this to be a giveaway at the end of the month, something you might be able to get. And then I did a lot of work on my blankets. Oh, where's my, okay, see a crochet hook wandering around. Where's the end of that yarn? <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, uh, I'm grabbing a stitch marker here real quick. <clears throat> Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> so I am now mm, about four, I'm four full balls in and I'm working on my fifth. I'm maybe a third of the way through my fifth ball. So I have completed the first color and I've transitioned into the second color. And I think it is turning out lovely. So there's my first color, which was amber. This is using the Red Heart Gemstones. And then I transitioned into the second color. You can see this kind of changing and bringing in that kind of yellowy, kind of pea green color, spring green color. And there is that. And the second color I'm working in, I think it's Jasper. Yep, is Jasper. So I'm using just three different shades of Red Heart Gemstone yarn, which to my dismay has been discontinued by your inspirations. It's very soft and very pretty. Yeah, I do feel maybe I made the blanket a little too wide, but it is going to be just fine for my purposes. I'm just trying to make a cuddly throw to just have around the house. So it should work perfectly for that. I, okay, and the next blanket I have in process is this unicorn grafkin. I folded it over to where I am. So I'm about, I think I just completed my 24th row. Yep, there are 120 rows in this total. Yep, so I am roughly fifth of the way done. And here she is. I haven't woven in all my ends. Um, I have no idea if I'm showing you the front or the back. I think that's the back. I think that's the front. Oh, who knows? <laughs> I mean, when you turn the work, is there really a front or a back? So there we go. We've got the eyes. I think these are supposed to be magical sparkles. And then I'm starting on kind of the flower crown. So this is some leaves at the base of the flower crown. Bingo is delighted and keeps saying, win my unicorn. Patience, young one, patience. But this is going very quickly. This is a Magic Pixel Designs, I believe is the name. Um, it's not printed on here. Um, there's, she has a website and Basically, it's graphs, and there's just very general instructions. It says you can use um, single crochet, half double crochet, or C2C, whatever your preference is. I am choosing half double crochet on this one, and it is working up very quickly, in my opinion. This sits in the living room, and it's not a place I have a lot of time to sit and craft usually, because it's normally like I'm doing this while the water's boiling and I'm making dinner or something like that, you know? <laughs> Um, 
So the next thing, this was one of my goals for the week and I accomplished it. I finished the sleeve for Chomps' dinosaur sweater. Yay, one sleeve done. So um, this is not quite to pattern. The pattern wanted you to complete it till the sleeve was a total of 11 and a half inches. His arms are 15 inches. So I kind of looked at the sweater and, you know, the drop of the shoulder and I went for 13 inches. So you do it for the certain number of inches and then she has you do additional rows after that point, I think, to just kind of finish the shaping. So up to that point, I did 13 inches because I knew the shaping she was adding was going to add about another three quarters of an inch to the length. And there we go. It should work out fine with the drop in the sweater. So we got that done. And beyond that, I have even begun the second sleeve. It is in progress. Not much progress, but it started. So any progress is good progress in, I think, most of our opinions. I also finished Sophie part four which reminds me where is sophie part five i have to add it to the bag here she is part five um plop that pattern in the bag i have not looked ahead to part five so i don't know if i'm gonna have to split this up in halvesies again or not but i mean there is no timeline on this so i i'm not feeling rushed um at this point i'll assume i'm gonna try to do all of part five this coming week but if i get started and the first row is taking me a while, I'll step back and have it be like just the first half, like I did last week with part four. And here she is, part four of my Sophie. It is glorious. It is beautiful. And I am so excited. So again, I don't have a plan for like which colors are which to go in the pattern. I'm just using scrap yarns for this and it excites me to no end to use you know just the remnants of yarn I had laying around in a bin to make something that's gonna be like heirloom quality so I I am stoked so I added uh two new colors in this round the no this was in part the first half so in part four total, I, I added two new colors. This is uh, Red Heart Ombre and Coral. And then I ran out of this dark purple. So I have this lighter purple. It's a big twist value. I don't know the color. The band is in there somewhere, but I'm not going to dig it. I have basically a giant Lime Brand Santa sack that I have thrown the scraps in that I think are going to go into this. And I'm just working it and grabbing. Although I have realized in, in these parts I've used, like in the beginning here, I used a lot more neutrals to contrast. So as I go out here, I'm going to try to use a bit more neutral color to help the other pretty, you know, brighter colors pop. And yeah, I don't, I think it's turning out lovely. I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, and yeah, it, it, we keep on keeping on on this. This is the final one because I'm not showing you my car project. And I haven't touched my Stephen West uh, Twists and Turns MCAL this week. I was focusing on other projects. That's, that's another long-term project. The goal is to get that done this year. But I, I don't have a timeline. It's, it's just for me. The other project that... Little Bingo has been chomping at the bit for is Junior the Jellyfish, which is I'm starting my Amigurumi journey. I'm using Crochet cr Cute Critters by Sarah Zimmerman. I did not realize until I saw John Boy talk about this book that Sarah is the same person from cr Repeat Crafter Me. What? I mean, had I read the blurb on the back, I would have known, but no, I was just like, Whoa, look at that cute book. I'm doing it. So it's amazing. So here I'm working on Junior the Doubt Jellyfish out of this book. I am, this is my first project. I'm using my Frills Odyssey 4.5 millimeter hook on. 
Um, thank you. Was it Celestial Rogue? I don't know. Someone in the comments, I had mentioned, mes blah, 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 my goodness, my words are gone today, mentioned that I wasn't really enjoying that hook because my fingers kept slipping. And I got two um, kind of main feedbacks or main suggestions, which was try to clean the hook. Maybe there's some residue from the firing, which is a great idea. I did that and it worked wonders. Um, Sandy from Crochet A Canada also said she finds if she lotions up her hands, that helps with these hooks. I did not try that yet because the cleaning of the hook helped. But should I encounter another problem, I will absolutely see if lotioning the hands works. I am like minutes away from completing this. I have finished his little body with the little ruffle. There's she said to leave long tails. I think I left excessively long tails. So I have the body. Bingo picked the eyes. She wanted red eyes. So there we go. I had some scrap purple from projects last year laying around. So that's why I did this. This project, so the eyes are from Stash. This is from Stash. All the polyfill is from Stash. But this does not count for Stash Down 2023 because this yarn was purchased in January. This was the new Big Twist Party yarn. And let me say, I love the feel of it. I love the silkiness of it. Um, I'm going to do a review on it. It is no fun to crochet with, and it might be because I was using a smaller than recommended hook. It was splitty to no end, um, but I want to do some more with it with a more recommended size hook before I make a final judgment. I do love the feel of it. I love the colors. I love everything about it, except that it was splitty. So here's the bottom and the tendrils. I have sewn them all in. These are my excess from sewing in. This is my long tail from the little bottom. So now I just have to attach the tendrils to the base. And we have a jellyfish. I think I am going to have to stuff this a little more. That is one thing I really don't fully understand, is how to properly stuff an amigurumi. And from what I'm reading, uh, I think it's just something you learn with time and feel. Because there's like, there seems to be a very delicate balance between overstuffing and understuffing to find the perfect stuffing. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, I do think I'm going to leave all those yarn ends attached and just cram them in there. Because I do know a number of people use yarn scraps to stuff their amigurumi, which I think is fabulous and a wonderful way to further reduce our crafting waste. And that is the end of all of my projects for this week. I am excited. I had felt that knitting was kind of taking over for a while, but now I think crochet has made a resurgence. <laughs> and we're back in the game, baby. So let's go through what's going on this week. Tomorrow, I did make a tutorial on attaching the button to, not the button, well, there is a button involved. Attaching the pom-pom to Bingo's hat. So I'm going to drop that tomorrow. Um, on Monday, I'll have an opening. On Tuesday, I don't really have anything planned. So you might just see me open Ellie's Stitch Markers, which I have forgotten to do. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I have the um, Stitch Marker Advent Calendar from Ellie Leva. And I was going to try to remember to open this at the beginning of the video, but I forgot. So you're getting it now. Day four. Let us see what treasure lies within. Ah, these have been so fun. They are so beautiful, so well made. I've already been using one and it's working fantastically. She gave me the option of what kind of clasps and I asked for a um, mix between leverback and lobster. So that's why you're seeing both. Oh, this is so fun. Oh, that is cute. Okay. So this one is, it's a little globe that's filled with little green, I believe they are hearts. I think they're hearts. Confetti, sparkly confetti. Oh my God, that is so much fun. Oh, I love that. I love it. Perfect. Thank you, Ellie. Beautiful. Check her out if you haven't done so. What else do we have going on? Wednesday, 
we're going to look at those granny squares that Melissa from Melissa Crochets with Love sent as part of the granny square collaboration, granny square collaboration, and maybe start to brainstorm about what we're going to do with those. Thursday as things are making Thursday. Friday brings us back to a board decision with Brian. You might want to check out the one we dropped last night. There is a secret word. And then we're going to start our Fridays with Fred. I did not start it last or yesterday because we had a bunch of other videos that I had to do and I didn't want to release three videos in one day. I thought two crafting kitties is enough for everybody in one day. So then that brings us back to Saturday, which is going to be our next weekly roundup and Sophie's Universe update. I've been doing a little short with Sophie and that. And so it is February 4th, which means I need to do my update for my stash down 2023 with Bridget from Queen's Crafts by Bridget. Go check her out if you have not done so already. And so for January, I need to report that yarn from my stash. So I've weighed my projects um, for the scrunchies, the, um, the, the hair bands. I did purchase a 200 pack from Amazon last year to try to make scrunchies with. So I do consider that using stash. I hope Bridget confirms with or concurs with that. Um, and there is one amigurumi in here and I am using, I don't have the bag here, polyfill that I bought at least five years ago. So that is stash polyfill as well. I used a grand total of 65.7 ounces of product from my stash. I am so excited. And I've already started um, measuring for February. Really, the only thing that's counted so far are these scrunchies. They don't weigh a ton, but it's something that's used out of the stash. And that is the goal. So I know there are a number of channels doing shop my stash. I... I'm a bargain shopper. <laughs> I want to see the new yarns. So I am in no way declaring I will not be purchasing yarn in 2023. That is unrealistic. I will be buying. But I will also be focusing on my projects to use existing yarn. So we're just, the goal is to manage the stash. Use what we have, but also understand that the yarn companies will not stop making beauties. Um, I think, oh no, I have more to do in this book. Okay, so monthly goals for January. Um, we already said I did not complete the dino sweater. As of last week, I had a couple of days to make a tutorial and I snuck it in. So you got the hat pom-pom. So I get to cross that off. That's already been crossed off. Monthly goals for February. We did this last week. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about the monthly goals, but it's Dino Sweater, do the collaboration with Colleen, make a shawl for the Marley, um, coll not collaboration, for the Crafty Kitty Creator Spotlight, and to do the owl basket for the um, things we're making Thursday. I also want to make one yarn review, one tutorial, and start my Fridays with Fred. And then goals for the week. Okay, so last week I wanted to complete Sophie Part 4. Check. I wanted to start the owl basket. Check. I wanted to finish the sleeve on the dino sweater. Check. I wanted to make that tutorial. Check. I wanted to do two yarn reviews. They did not happen. So, weekly goals for this week. I want to... I have Sophie Part 5 in here. Like I said before, I don't know how long that's going to take. So, we're just going to start working on it. I want to finish the basket body of the owl so that's good i want to finish one half of the next sleeve for the dino sweater little manageable bites and i need to complete junior the jellyfish which as you saw i just need to maybe stuff a little bit more and then attach the bottom that should be done very soon um and then for my others i would like to start my next tutorial it's going to be a larger tutorial so it's going to be a start on it. I also want to do the reviews that I had wanted to do last week. 
and that's going to be on the new big twist yarns that I've been using. So there you go. That is what you can expect from a crafting kitty in the next week. I hope you all had some fun and I would love to hear about anything you guys are making or creating or if you have any suggestions of patterns or things you think I should be doing. I love to hear about it. You can either email me or catch me on my Facebook group. It's the Crafting Kitty Community Group. It's all linked down below. Um, and remember, oh, this is this is last. I have to get this sent out to Mel. Um, the Crafting Kitty Creator Spotlight is open. Marley Bird, send me your things. Instagram, email, Facebook. Let's have fun with this. And yeah, we are closing in on 1500 subs. So if you want to like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, we're going to, Brian and I talked about it and I think we got a fun thing in the works for 1500. So I'll see you guys all around on the YouTube streets. Bye-bye.